Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining again. Um, this this is a follow up. We actually did a um, abbrevi I did an abbreviated version of this uh, a couple of weeks back, and um, there was some interest from the attendees in doing the um, the full version of it. So hopefully you've got some of your uh, employees on, uh, some of your branch people, and we will go through the Copeland Mobile app. Um, Basically, I want to show you guys uh, what a powerful tool to become and how to maneuver within the app, how to find information quickly and efficiently, and how to assist your customers, your contractor customers, with some of the troubleshooting um, calls that you typically get. You know, I worked wholesaler for 16 years uh, at an authorized Copeland wholesaler. Uh, it was quite a while ago, but the game hasn't changed that much. So I'm, I'm, I'm aware of you know some of the things you guys are faced with on a daily basis as far as those calls. Um, and one thing I do want to say before we get started is uh, I've called this the Julie Walters WebEx series. Um, she's really been grinding away at this to keep this going, and I think she's been doing a great job. And I think you all would agree. And if you get a chance to thank her, please do that, because this has just been tremendous. The feedback's been really, really good. So let's get into Copal Mobile. I'm going to show you about five slides, and then I'm going to go to the Copal Mobile app live. Uh, on the desktop version that I have, and uh, I will do the rest of the presentation live on the app um, without a net, and hopefully uh, I don't need that net. But it's been pretty good so far. So Copa Mobile was released um, a little over five years ago. Uh, when the app first came out, it was a very, very good source of information. It was a good secondary source uh, to, to use. Um, if you didn't have access to OPI or you just needed to get a part number. But it is really uh, in the last 12 to 18 months with some of the upgrades we've done, uh, I have noticed, and that's why I kind of started to do these training classes, what a powerful tool this Copeland Mobile app has become, uh, both for wholesalers as well as contractors. So uh, I hope that um, some of you today the wholesalers, the branch people, the product managers, after I walk you through the app and what I think are important key points um, to hit to show you, that you'll take some time with some of your contractors and show them how to use the app as well. Because what I find is I'll be in a room with contractors, 75, 80% of them will say, yeah, I've got that Copa mobile app on my phone. And they'll all hold their screens up and I'll see it and it's there. and I'll say, how many of you really know how to use it, or do you use it? And that number goes way down. So they have the app because it's Copeland, and they feel like they should. But the reality is they really don't know the capabilities of the app and how it can help them. Uh, so I'm going to walk through some of that. Uh, we used to print this electrical handbook. It uh, used to come out yearly. That's where we used to house all of our uh, electrical data, uh, part numbers, uh, resistance, wiring diagrams. The book hasn't been printed in approximately 10 years. So Copeland Mobile is now the choice, the best option to go and get that information, okay? What's great about the app is it's constantly being updated. So if we were to release a new compressor model number next week, within a few days most likely, the information for that new model would be in Copeland Mobile, okay? Whereas prior, you would have to wait for the next publication you know, of the electrical handbook, okay? So I'm going to run through some of these features. Uh, the app has a lot of different uh, options once you get into it. I want to show you how to, um, how to maneuver within the app, how to find what you're looking for quickly and efficiently so you can get information for yourself or to help a contractor who you may have on the phone, on the phone. Uh, he may be at a job site and trying to assist him with some troubleshooting. So I'm going to run through uh, a couple of different scenarios live in a few minutes. But it does, uh, you can pick up obviously product specs. We can do cross-reference. I will do some cross-reference from obsolete Copeland to new, uh, from competitive to Copeland. Uh, and I do definitely want to touch on the uh, performance calculator. That upgrade has really been a significant improvement. So I'm going to show you an example of that, and I think I'm going to have uh, Larry O'Day join me on that one when we get to diagnostics. And there's also a really easy link now from Copeland Mobile to 
our application engineering bulletins, which I will show you as well, which is really handy. And I will cover that. For those of you who don't have the app, I would encourage you to get it. Get it today when we're done. Um, it's, it's like downloading any other app. You type in Copal Mobile in the App Store and you, you put it on your device. If you do want the desktop version, there's a link to get it right off of OPI. You can see it on the screen there, Copeland Mobile Desktop. And we also have a link to all of our other mobile apps as well. Okay, but if you want to have this Copeland Mobile on your desktop, there's a separate link just for that. And it's not a bad idea. That, you can also click that radio button to the right that says Copeland Mobile also. It'll take you right to it, Scott. Oh, great. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate that. Yep. There it is. Perfect. Perfect. I'm used to the old <laughs> go to the link, but yeah, that's a great. Thanks for uh, putting that putting that out there, Larry. Um, so you guys know sometimes OPI goes down, uh, sometimes your mainframe goes down. Copeland Mobile is always up, um, and I do have to tell you when I'm I've been out on the road, and there's been days when I've been able to answer most of the questions I got using Copeland Mobile pulled over on the side of the road. So it really has become a powerful tool. So let's go to the app right now. Here we go. And I will tell you, Scott, it's um, it looks like WebEx is pretty laggy today. So. Um, oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys do you see the home screen now? If there's if there's a delay, uh, I'm not seeing the home screen yet. It may be on my side. Larry, are you seeing okay. that? Uh, I see your live demo. Yeah, it's up. Yeah, it's up. Okay, it's okay. it must be mine. I'm gonna have to go kick one of my kids off of uh, <laughs> off of YouTube. Excellent. There you go. Okay, okay. So hopefully you guys see the um, the home screen for Copeland Mobile. So once you once you open the app, you'll come to this screen, and from here you can enter in just the first couple characters of a model number. And the, um, the app will populate all the models that start with those characters you put in, okay? Or you have the option of going to your history. Now the history will show the 10 last compressors, condensing units, or Copeland parts that you searched. Uh, so if you have an ongoing conversation with a contractor, and uh, oftentimes uh, it takes two or three different phone calls to resolve some things, you can just keep, keep going back to your history and selecting the compressor that you're working on, okay? So for the example, I did select the ZB38KCE-TF5. And once you select it immediately, this first screen is, is a really good source of information. Um, this screen shows you all the applications and all of the refrigerants that this particular model number has been approved for by Copeland. So you can see here the ZB38 is approved for all of these refrigerants in a high and medium temp application, okay? So if the question is simply, hey, hey Mike, um, I've got this ZB38, I want to use 448 with it, is that okay? You can get it right here, right off the front, right off the front page once you select the model number. So let's dive in. I'm going to go with 404A. You'll notice for each refrigerant, there is a 50 hertz and 60 hertz option. Uh, you'll want to pick 60 hertz here in the US. And the first uh, page that comes up is that summary screen. Okay, so you'll get some basic information right here. It's a generic capacity number, 37,000 BTUs. It's a medium temp application. I will show you uh, in a few moments where that capacity number comes from. Okay, at what conditions that's derived from. And it's 404A, it's got POE oil, and it's, it gives you the voltage as well, 233 phase, which is indicated by our TF5 voltage code. So just some basic information. And then as you're in the app down the left side, these are your different options, mechanical, electrical, performance, cross-reference, you know, wiring diagram, service parts. So you've got a lot of different places where a lot of different information is stored depending on what you're looking for. So let's click on mechanical. 
hopefully it's not lagging behind. And the screen that comes up is another like summary shot of the mechanical data for this model number. So it will give you the overall dimensions. It will give you the, um, the footprint. In this case, it's seven and a half by seven and a half. That's your mounting footprint. It also will tell you your suction and discharge line sizes. On this summary, it tells you it's a 7-8 stub tube for suction, a half-inch stub tube for discharge. Now, some models may also have a rotolock option. We'll get into that later when I talk about bill of materials, okay? Our rotolock option would be our threaded suction and discharge connection, okay? Here you'll see we give you the oil charge. That's your factory charge of 64 ounces. And then below that, you'll see another oil recharge, an oil, char oil recharge number of 60 ounces. So if a customer is doing an oil change, if he had a burnout, uh, whatever the case may be, he may ask you, how much oil do I put back in? You're going to use the oil recharge number. It's four ounces less because we know there will be residual oil out in that system or in the failed compressor, okay? And having too much oil in the system can cause some issues, which we'll talk about later on. And then you'll also get the weight of the compressor as well. In this case, it's 83 pounds. So that's what the mechanical option gives you. We'll move on and select electrical. Now this is, um, there's a lot of good information on the screen that looks, it doesn't look like there's much there, but there really is. Um, it's 233 phase, and then we give you basically four different amp draw ratings. Our locked rotor amps, our LRA is 128. And let's go down to this one, MCC. Our maximum continuous current, that amp draw rating is 31 amps. So that's your MCC value. That is typically the value where an internal overload will open, okay, and trip the compressor. So if you've got a contractor who's having that issue, you can look at the MCC value and you can ask him, what is your amp draw? Are you, are you getting near there? And that, that could be why that overload is opening, okay? So it's something to keep in mind. And then we give you two additional, there's two formulas here. Our MCC divided by 1.4 at 22.1 amps. And you'll see this info button. So if you tap on that or hover over it, You'll see that that formula, MCC divided by 1.4, is used for contactor selection. All right, so in this case, it's 22 amps for the ZB38KCE. You will size up from that amp draw rating to select the contactor for this model. So you'll probably give them a 30 amp contactor, okay? Um, and why is that good information? The reason is because you've probably seen the publication we have in our application engineering bulletins where we have contactor selection for our larger discus, our 4Ds, our 6Ds, 4R, and 6R. We don't really list contactor selection for some of our smaller models, some of our scrolls. As a matter of fact, if I open up contactor here, it's not populated in the app, okay? So the best way, the way I do it is I come in here and I use this formula, MCC divided by 1.4, that's for contactor selection. It's 22 amps, you will size up from there, okay? So if you sell a contractor, the ZB38, he leaves the branch, he calls you right back in five minutes. Hey Joe, I just picked up that ZB38, I thought I had a contactor in my van, I don't, I'm gonna, Turn around to the light, can you pull one out and put it on the counter? Okay, great, sure. Well, what contact are you gonna give them? Go to Copeland Mobile, type in the model number, go to electrical, use this formula and size up from there. It's the fastest, easiest, most accurate way to select the contactor, okay? Then you'll see right below that, we have the MCC divided by 1.56. It's a slightly lower amperage reading, 19.9, that's typically for your circuit breaker and wire gauge selection. You probably won't use that as much, but it's good information to know uh, if you do get asked that it is on Copa Mobile, okay? Now, because this is a three-phase model, I do not have a capacitor or relay listed, so let's see. 
I'm going to go back to home. I'm going to go to my history. And I think I have a single phase. Here we go. This is a single phase compressor. I'll stick with 404. Come back to electrical. And now here you'll see, because it's single phase, we do have start cap, run cap listed, okay? So here's your start cap with your rating. It's 243 to 292 at a 250 VAC. That's your start capacitor. And your run in this case is a 4440, okay? Fantastic. So you get those ratings for the capacitors. And you'll see, guys, I'm doing this live, just like you would if you had your device in your hand and you were using the couple of mobile app yourselves. Very, very fast way to get this information. Let's look at relay. Okay, so here's our relay. And you'll notice it's an 040 number. We do give you the pickup and dropout volts as well as the coil voltage, but you, know, you look at that 040 number and you say, I don't think I have that in stock, right? And you type it into your system. Well, guys, you're not going to find that relay on your shelf behind the counter, okay? That is our OEM part number, the 040, okay? So uh, you've all had this scenario, contractor walks in, you're standing at the counter, hey, Bill, what's happening? He throws a relay at you, you pick it up, it's got that Copeland 040 number on it, right? 040 0166 dash something, okay? That's our OEM part number, okay? So we take that OEM part number relay we put it in a nice, pretty Copeland box with some hardware, some flag terminals, and then if it comes an aftermarket service kit, that's when it gets that 940 number that you're used to seeing on those um, service replacement relays. So the way I do this, and you may have a different system, but the way I cross these over is I come down here to the bottom left within Copeland Mobile, and you have the option to go directly to OPI. I will click on that. It takes me right in. I don't have to sign in. Okay, I go right to OPI. I come to cross-reference. I go to Copeland to Copeland. And I'm going to put that 040 number in and hit submit. And you'll see here's the original OEM part number that's on that relay that Bill threw at you, okay, as you were standing at the counter and said, hey, I need a relay. And now you're going to give Bill that 940-0140-04. That will be the relay you have in stock, okay, behind your counter on your shelf. You'll have that as an aftermarket service replacement kit. Okay, so that's the way I go from OEM Copeland part numbers to aftermarket service replacement that the wholesaler will have in stock. Okay, very quick, very fast. We'll go back to the app. You'll notice contactor, it's not populated. Okay, there's, there's too many different options to put in there. So what can I do? You remember what I did? Back to summary. I'll look at my RLA, MCC divided by 1.4 for contactor selection. In this case, it's 14.6. You size up from there. You're probably going to give Bill a 20, uh, maybe a 25 amp contactor if you have it in stock. A typical question you'll get is a uh, contractor's at the job site. He wants to check out the resistance of his motor and the compressor. Okay, hopefully he's doing that before he condemns it. If he's not, you may suggest it, but where does he get that resistance rating? Okay, right here. Come to Copeland Mobile, go to electrical, open up winding resistance. And you have it right here. It's start and run winding resistance, plus or minus 5%. Okay, very, very quick, very easy. For those of you on the phone who were around back in the day, let's say, and you used the old electrical handbook, it took a little while to find that. This is very, very quick now, okay? I just saw a question pop up. And let's see. The um, question was, does the, does no, the, it was. Oh, go ahead. No, I think he, I think somebody was asking, does the cross reference on this side of the app work the same way instead of going to OPI? 
Uh, let's try it with a part. I know it works for compressors. Sorry. Back home. Go for it. Okay, so that number wasn't in there. Right? And that's that's probably how I ended just, up going uh, OPI to yeah, look just, for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. just back out that O just back out that yeah. O three and it's gonna bring up yeah, it's going to bring up everything. So yeah, <clears throat> it should. See, it doesn't give you the aftermarket part number, right? No, but go to where to go to where to buy. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Yep, yep. It's going to cross it right there. Okay. And you can search. Yep. Fantastic. Different way to. We did way to have find it. another couple of questions pop up. Um, sure. Let's see. Uh, will Copeland Mobile have the ability down the road to cross the relay to wholesale version 940? And so I think we just answered that for you Dave did. Singleton. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, will the app show? Ah, oh, good question. And this was sent to me privately, but uh, will the app show if the wholesale model um, is shipped with components or not? If not, how do you find this information? So you can, I, Scott, are you going to cover the what's inside? Yes. Feature? I will. Okay, so we will get mm -hmm. to that. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I was probably going to cover that at the end. So we, That's you fine. want to jump into it now? No, no. Okay. We, whatever your, whatever your uh, plans are, we'll stick with them. Okay. Yeah, we'll do, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, uh, we'll stick with the ZB38. To be consistent, uh, I'll stay with 404A again. And another area where we've made some improvements in the app is in the performance, uh, the performance area. And this is really one that, um, to me, has been very, very useful. It is a feature of the app that I make sure I show contractors um, when I'm working with them or when I'm showing them the app and how it works because this is information that they can use on a daily basis, okay? That, that would be uh, important to them and very useful to them. Um, so I would encourage you again, I'm probably going to say this two or three more times before we're done, to take the time to pull aside those contractors that you have good relationships with or the, or the guys that you know are looking for information and, and, you know, good smart ways to find that information and show them some of these features in the app because when you do that, you become a valuable resource to your contractor customer as a wholesaler partner. If you can help him do his job easier, or if you can help him find information faster, you've all of a sudden raised the value. You become an asset to him. And then what happens next? Guys, you all know what happens next. Like I said, I worked wholesaler. It was a long time ago. The game hasn't changed that much. When you're able to help these guys out, you get the first phone call. You get the first crack at selling him that replacement compressor or quoting that big job, okay? You're first on his speed dial, all right? So I would say this is definitely something you wanna show uh, the contractor is how we've uh, enhanced the performance. So when you open it up, you'll see what you've always seen on the app from day one. You get the rated performance for this model at two different conditions. These are the industry standard ARI conditions. So you're going to see a condition number one, uh, R404A at a 20 degree evaporator and a 120 condensing temp. That compressor is going to give you 37,000 BTUs, which is what came up on that summary screen when we first started the presentation. That's where that 37,000 came from, from these conditions, 20 degree of app, 120 condensing. And then you'll see here at those conditions, that compressor should be drawing about 16.6 .6 amps, okay? Then we give you a second condition, ARI condition, ARI rating, 45 degree evaporator, 130 condensing, okay? So higher suction, obviously we're gonna have a, 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 an increase in BTU capacity at those conditions. We're going to get 53,000 BTUs now, and our amp draw is going to go a little higher. And that's kind of where the information used to stop. So if your customer wasn't running at exactly those two parameters, 
and you had to go to the old capacity tables and such and, and try to find uh, the information for him. With the upgrade, you can open up now dynamic performance. And this kind of changes the game because this allows you now to go in and say, well, Bill is running a 25 degree evaporator at about a 115 condensing. And you can press on calculate on those conditions. The app will do the calculation It'll open another box up below, right here, and you'll see at a 25 of app 115 condensing, you're now getting 43,000 BTUs. Your amp draw is 15.8, and we're also giving you some nice additional information that you did not have before. It's going to give you an approximate liquid temperature of about 115 degrees. Nice to know, right? It's also going to give you an approximate discharge line temp. So at those conditions, your discharge temperature should probably be about 178 degrees. That is really great information that you can get very quickly, okay? And if your technician, your contractor customers are out there trying to troubleshoot or service something, that's information that would be very useful to them. So again, I would encourage you to show them the, uh, the performance section of the Copa Mobile. Show them what it can do and what it can do for them, the information they can get from that, okay? So yeah, you just open that up and now you can go in and you can change these conditions. We can make it 30. You can go to 125 condensing. You know, as long as we stay in that envelope, and if you go out of the envelope, it'll tell you, and you'll see those conditions do change. Your BTUs, your amp draw, your discharge temp. Okay, as that condensing temperature goes up, what happens? My discharge temperature starts to creep up as well. Okay, so there's a direct correlation there. Very useful stuff. So let's go into cross-reference a bit. I'm going to go back to my history. Um, I'm sure you guys get phone calls uh, pretty often where somebody has an older Copeland model number. And there's still a lot of them out there, guys. There's still a lot of old discus numbers in, in service that need to be replaced. And they give you that old number or they send you a picture of the nameplate that I need the replacement for this. Okay. So let's look at one of those. I have a 3DA30750 TFC here. I'll select that. We'll see that it's a um, medium temp R22. We'll open that up. The first thing that comes up on the summary sheet is that that compressor is obsolete, right? So you're not going to find that back in your warehouse or in your distribution center, okay? Unless you've got very old inventory, which I doubt any of you do. So that compressor is obsolete. So what can we do? We can go to cross-reference, and you'll see up here on the top, the print is very small. Um, we have asked that this gets uh, made a little larger so it's easier to read. I think they're working on that. But you can see this original model, the 3DA30750 TFC, is replaced now by the 3DA3R10ME TFC-800. So that's the model number that you'll have in stock or in your distribution center, okay? So customer calls, he's got an obsolete Copeland part number. Look how fast we did that. We went into Copeland Mobile, we put it in, we went to cross-reference, we got our new number that's not based off horsepower anymore, but based off capacity, okay? And now you can quote that you can quote that compressor and get that customer out the door. We can also do competitive to Copeland. Uh, I can take it to Compsy number, this AE twenty four thirteen one thirty four A application one fifteen volt, and I can go to cross reference, the same as I did with the obsolete Copeland par number. And now I'll see that the AE2413Y has been replaced by the AFE12 C4E IAA. And then you've got two options, 901 or 959, okay? So you've got two bill of materials, okay? Typically that bill of material determines uh, what type of suction and discharge connections are on that model, okay?
okay? So for those of you who don't know what a bill of material is, the bill of material is always the last three digits of the Copeland model number. And typically it delineates whether it's an aftermarket service replacement or the original OEM compressor. So we would build compressors for OEMs, sell them to the Hill Phoenix of the world or, or the uh, zero zones of the world. They take those compressors, they put them on their racks, and then they go out the door to the end user. They have a different bill of material. So we often get questions about bill of material. So let's look at a good way to uh, determine what bill of material uh, replaces what. We'll go back to our ZV38. So I was also going to reference Julie? here. Um, no, no, no. Kevin McClanahan sent me a, a note, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention um, that cross referencing is also a, a great place to determine the discus three to discus two cross references. We talked about this, or Mike Williams talked about it last yeah, Thursday. The dash dash eight ninety nine, mm -hmm. the the flat bottom versus deep sump. Um, this is a perfect tool to use to make sure that you're getting the right um, bill of material on those D three to D two cross references. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. So let's look at our bill of materials on our ZV38 KCE. And you'll see we have a wholesaler section and an OEM section. You may get a call from a contractor. And he says, hey, Kevin, I've got a ZV38 KCE TF5 250. I need to replace it. Well, you won't have a 250 in stock, okay? Um, that's an OEM bill of material number. So in this case, that 250 indicates OEM, okay? Your service replacement bill of material for, uh, for a ZV scroll compressor, is, it will always start with a nine, okay? So, but you can go and look through the OEM bill of materials and you see that a 210 is a seven eight stub tube or sweat connection, half inch, half inch discharge or sweat connection. The 250 is also 7 eighths half inch stub. There's a 265, which is our rotor lock or threaded connection. Okay, so if you're not sure what a 250 is, you can come and look in the build material section of Copeland Mobile and say, okay, I've got a 7 eighths half inch stub tube. What do I give him as a wholesaler? Well, let's open up our wholesaler option. And as a wholesaler, you will stock either one of these, probably both, the 950 or 965 version, okay? Your 950 is your 7 8 stub, half inch stub tube. That would replace that 250 that you got the call for. If you needed a Rotolock version to replace the 265, it would be the 965. You'll see here that's a Rotolock connection on your suction and discharge as well. So this is a great way to quickly, again, and efficiently determine what service replacement OEM will replace a, a, uh, an OEM bill of material uh, that you're getting a phone call for. And I, I know you guys get those phone calls quite frequently because we get them as well. So we're getting them from you and you're getting calls from your customers. So this is a great way to go in and compare OEM bill of materials to the wholesaler aftermarket service replacement bill of materials that you guys have on your shelf in the back, okay? So we just had a question come in. What happens when you have a bill of material that doesn't appear on the bill of material example? And um, yeah. the one he's referencing is a dash 100 that he had mm -hmm. come through last week. Yeah, <clears throat> and that does happen. You know, the, the fuel, they're not all in here. Um, I would yep. say, 80%, 90% of the time that you'll be able to do it. If that happens, you will have to make a phone call um, out to customer service and get some assistance. But I'm sure, you know, we're, we're working on the app. Like I said, we're yeah, constantly yeah, updating we are, we're, Yeah. So the, the other thing I'll say is um, right now, the system that we are on, um, it clearly it doesn't go all the way out to the bill of material, right? You, you, you only get out to the voltage. And that's a limitation of our own internal um, product information database that we're running off of. We are in the process of transitioning 
um, to a newer system, to a better system that will go all the way out to bill of material. Uh, I would expect that's going to be a pretty major enhancement that happens um, at the end of this year. So uh, once we make that transition, I think you will see uh, a decline in the number of those bills of material that are, that are unidentifiable. Um, the other thing, I've had a couple of messages just pop up. The Dash 100s in, in most cases are probably a condensing unit or a compressor that are on a condensing unit. So if that is the case, um, you might want to ask the question of the, the contractor, what's the model number on the condensing unit? Then you can, you can go into Copeland Mobile or into OPI via the route of the, the condensing unit and, and drill down to what the compressor would be. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, like I said, most of them, Julie, are, are in there. Most of the ones I go look for are in mobile. Yep. Not every single one is. Yeah, and I know we're still working on that, but it's still a great way to um, to find most of uh, your OEM bill of material numbers and what they would cross over to as far as the service replacement. So one other thing so, that I'm, I'm going to reference here, and I hate to, you know, keep jumping in, but no, um, I do want to tell you that, that next week we're going to have Brad Thompson present, um, and Brad Thompson's over our technical services group, and his, he, he analyzes all the calls that come in. Um, we have a, a software that analyzes all the calls that come in to technical services from, from your branches, and he can provide each company essentially with a breakdown of the types of calls that are coming in from your branches. And I will tell you, um, and he will tell you next week, that approximately 70 to 80% of the calls that come into technical services are related to cross-reference. So if you just think about the, the amount of time it takes for somebody to pick up a phone, wait for somebody in service engineering to answer, for them to look it up, which they are looking it up on Copeland Mobile or on OPI, I promise you. They don't have any extra magic books that they're looking at. Um, so, utilizing Copeland Mobile and the cross-referencing tools that are on here will cut down most of your branches calling into service engineering by 70 to 80 percent. And if you can push this out even further to your contractors to enable them to figure out the cross-reference before they even call you, that, that's going to save everybody a tremendous amount of time. Yeah, good point. Great point, Julie. Um, if you, anything you can do, you know, especially now, I mean, you know, we're, we're going to be short staffed, you know, um, you know, we are as well. So anything you can do to, to make your lives easier to, to, you know, to make the transaction go quicker, the cross reference go quicker, you should definitely take advantage of. And um, like Julie said, I would definitely be showing this to your contractors. Um, you know, what this app can do for them, you know, um, as far as getting information out. Uh, let's look at diagnostics. This, this is another area where I would definitely be uh, showing this to your contractors actively because this is uh, an upgrade we just made, I think, within the last eight months that also to me, uh, I've used this constantly. I used it this morning, as a matter of fact, um, on a discus compressor. You can go now into the diagnostic section and you can populate these inputs, suction pressure, discharge pressure, and the actual amp draw that the contractor is seeing at the, um, at the job site. And you can get some really good information from it, but he has to give you that information. So what does that mean? He has to have his gauges on the system. He has to have his amp, uh, his amp probe out and connected, okay? If he were to call, out to James Stevenson in service engineering looking for help. Other than the model number and what refrigerant he's using, I would bet money James' next three questions would be, what's your suction pressure? What's your discharge pressure? And what is your amp draw? Okay, so now the app will allow you to help him. Okay, so I'm, I'm sticking with my ZB38 KCE. So let's say you, you get a phone call 
from Joe. Joe says, hey, Kevin, I'm working on the ZB38. I'm not sure if my amp draw is quite right. I think it might be a little bit high. Can you help me out? Well, if Joe can give you some information, you can definitely help him out now with Copeland Mobile. So if Joe can tell you I'm running 62 pound suction, uh, what's your discharge pressure? Uh, about 270. And what is your amp draw, Joe? I'm drawing about 20 amps. Hit calculate. Okay, and then you'll get results. Those two fields will get populated. The first field is the current draw from rated data. So what Copeland Mobile is telling you is that for this compressor, at, for 404A, at a 62-pound suction and a 270 discharge, you should be drawing about 15 amps, 15.1, it says. Joe is telling you he's drawing 20 amps. So this second box down here is telling you my plus or minus, the absolute difference between what I'm actually seeing at the job site, which is 20 amps, and what I should be seeing, 15 is 32%, right, plus or minus. He's up 32%. Joe's got himself a problem, okay? He should be within that zero to 10%, okay? So you could say, all right, Joe, you know, you're, you're a little high in the amp draw. Let's take a look. You can now click on troubleshooting. And what this does now is this gives you a list of things, or if you've shown Joe how to use the app himself, Joe's got the list in his hand. So these are potential causes of high current, high amp draw. And you can look through these, I'm not gonna cover each one, but you know, high discharge pressures. Dirty condenser is the most obvious, right? An overcharged system, okay? Uh, he's got too much refrigerant, is driving up his amp draw. Um, his high suction pressure, maybe he's got a poorly insulated TXV bulb, okay? That valve's operating erratically. Um, a lot of things to look at, um, and high, high oil level. We talked about that earlier when I talked about oil charge. I can't tell you how many times over the years, especially in the summer, where um, I've gotten calls from contractors, and they say, you know, my amp draw is high. I don't understand why. Yeah, everything seems to be fine. Um, but then you go to find out that they're on the third replacement compressor, okay? So keep in mind, every time you pull a compressor out of a system and you replace it with a new one, what are you adding? Well, you're adding another oil charge to that system. So if you have a system that's not properly piped or the oil returns a little sketchy, it's not getting back to the compressor, some of it stays out, when they pull that old compressor out, about 80%, 85% of that oil charge that's listed on the nameplate should be still it should be in that failed compressor, okay? And if they're not measuring what's coming out of the failed compressor versus what should be in it, they have no way of knowing how much oil is still out in the system. So they're on their third compressor, the system has poor oil return, and they've added two additional oil charges. So what happens is that oil level inside the shell of the scroll starts to rise, and now your rotor is partially submerged in oil and you get what's called rotor drag. And that rotor drag drives your amp draw up. So we've had guys, we tell them, hey, take some of that oil out of that system, get it, get it back down to half a glass, three quarters of a side glass, you know, get that oil level where it should be, and that amp draw falls right back in line, okay? So what we try to do with this diagnostics is give them easy things to go look for. Because a lot of times your, your contractors immediately think it's something more complex than it is. Let's knock off the simple stuff first. Can you cross all these off and say, it's not that before we move on to something more complex? If you can, you've just done that contractor a, a, a great service. So I would be showing this to all of your contractor customers, especially the diagnostics. Is Larry O'Day on? Yeah, I'm on. Larry, you, you just had an example um, where you use this uh, diagnostics function with one of your customers, right? Yes, I did. Can, I had, can you uh, share that? A month ago, I had a guy from Utah called me, and just like Scott, and, and I guess the question you should ask was Scott's experience. Why the heck is Scott using Copa Mobile? And the simple answers are the fast, it's fast, and it works. So, I mean, he's got a lot of experience. He doesn't need this, but it really works, and it tells you how that compressor is performing. 
and I would recommend every one of you guys make sure you got green counter guys or even seasoned guys. Make sure they're using this thing because if a contractor calls you up, you're not on the job site. You have no clue what he's doing or what's happening out there. But this this tells you the story right here. So uh, in any case, the, the story I had, contractor called me and uh, he told me, first off, this was the owner of the company. And he says, hey, I, I really, we put a new compressor in and it's running fine. But, and I don't really have a problem with it. The guy's off the job already. But he says, this is the third compressor we've replaced in seven years. And if I lose this compressor, I, I'm going to lose this customer. That's all there is to it. And I understand that. So I immediately, I go to Copeland Mobile and I said, do you know the pressures and the amperage? And he says, sure. Three simple questions. He gave me the pressures and the amperage. And in his case, we'll use this example because I don't remember what compressor it was. Uh, he was right around here, around 15 amps um over or i'm sorry about 15 percent over amping on that system and if you look down zero to ten percent you can walk off the roof you're done i mean you can feel pretty confident you've done everything you can do but if you're over that you've got a likely problem did you leave the job yeah if you got another bunch of calls and it's summertime you can leave but you need to come back in this case the guy didn't come back and he's losing compressors every few years so I went down to troubleshooting. Uh, we went through several procedures. I asked them about the run cap. They checked it. And of course, Scott showed you earlier in here, is it the right run cap in there? Bam, you go to electrical, he checked it. We know it's the right run cap. Everything's good. And I said, I, I assume your system's overcharged, maybe a little bit. And of course, he, you guys as wholesalers, I spent 27 plus years in wholesale. I know what it's like, contractor says, Nope, 30-year vet, this guy knows what he's doing. And you back down and go, okay, he knows what he's doing, that's fine. And I asked the question, how does he charge the system? Now, this system that I'm talking about happened to be 404, as Scott's looking at here. And the guy says, well, this guy uses a sight glass. And immediately I said, you can't use a sight glass on 404, it's a blend. And by the way, you shouldn't use a sight glass on anything anymore because you're not gonna get an accurate charge in there. And he said, well, that's what he does and he's a good tech. I said, okay, fine. I said, I would suggest you send a different tech out there so you don't rub it in his face and let him charge by superheat subcooling. But before he leaves the roof, please have him download Copeland Mobile, put the pressures and run this diagnostic and tell me where you're at. The guy did call me two days later and he said, wow, you were right. He had to pull some refrigerant out of there. He got it down to about 2% above amperage. And he says, the unit's running good. I says, guess what? You're not gonna lose a compressor in 10 or maybe even 12 years now. You're good to go. So it's a, it's a huge tool. And I tell that story when I'm doing training meetings because like Scott said, everybody's downloaded this app, but not many guys are using it. And my point is every service tech that's done with a job before he gets in the truck and leaves, why wouldn't you take one minute of your time, scan the compressor, put these pressures in and see how it's doing before you leave the job? I mean, if everybody scanned every job, 30% of our compressors come back, there's no defect found. And guess what? There's uh, we eat those and of course you process them with five people in the line of a counter guy to a purchasing agent buying a new compressor right down the line it's a huge cost to all of us and the contractor spends two hours putting a compressor in for no reason so the point is if everybody use copa mobile before they leave the job they can get a huge confidence that man i got this unit dialed in and that's uh basically it. and if any of you guys looking at p l statements you know what, what your warranty pile does just think if you could cut your warranty back by 50% because guys are now looking at Copa Mobile instead of bringing that compressor back as a warranty. Your labor, your warranty processing, freight, everything else, you're going to save a ton of money. That's all I got, Scott. Awesome. Great example, Larry. Thank, thanks for sharing that. And uh, a real true-to-life example of, of uh, how he helped the contractor solve a problem. Uh, and that guy probably would be changing a compressor as soon as he gets warm out again, okay? So I would 
definitely encourage you, like Larry just said, uh, to show this feature, this diagnostics feature to your customers because this is one that makes you look smart because you can give this guy answers as to what's going on in his system and why it's causing him problems. And also, once he's comfortable with the app, maybe that's one or two less phone calls you get in the middle of July uh, for someone looking for a little bit of troubleshooting help, okay? If he knows he can get this information off Copla Mobile and he's got his gauges and his AMP probe uh, hooked up to the system already, all these guys have their phones 24 seven. We all do, right? You've always got that device in your hand. So he's always got this technology. He could be standing in front of that unit or in that machine room or up on that roof, looking at this information instead of being on the phone with you guys. To me, that's very powerful. That's a very powerful tool that you've got now to share and become a partner with, with that contractor. So Larry, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. We still have a few minutes. Let's go to service parts. As, as wholesaler guys, um, a huge, huge part of our job uh, is to go out and to uh, take phone calls for replacement parts. So actually, let's change compressors here. We'll go to history. I'm going to pull up a discus. And again, I'm going to pull up a discus compressor. We can do X line as well, uh, service parts. If you were looking for crankcase heater for this 3D S3R17ME, okay, uh, TFC compressor. If you're looking for a heater, we can open that up. You've got it right here, okay? If OPI is down, or if your branch computer is down, you can use Copla Mobile. You can get the part number, okay? You can get it very fast, okay? Maybe even faster than using your terminal at the counter. Uh, if you're in the warehouse and you take a phone call, someone's looking for a part, you can look it up on Copla Mobile, pull the part and bring it up to the counter, okay? Uh, you need service valves. There they are, okay? Sometimes you need to look at uh, something other than what we have up here. Okay, you can view others, and this opens up everything now, all the different parts that will be listed in OPI. If you need a valve plate or a, a core sense module, this is the section where you would find that. Okay, here's your valve plate, your 998-2661-51. Let's go home with that part number real quick. Here's a cool new feature we just added. Okay, now you'll see on this 998-2661-51, it's called what's inside, all right? You will see- Hey Scott, just for, oh. just for your own future reference, you can just click on that, uh, that blue hyperlink on the last page. You don't have to type it in. It should hyperlink you right over to the- Oh, okay. Got to the what's inside. Perfect. Thank you, Julie. So now you'll see exactly what comes in that valve plate kit. So when you sell that contractor, 998-2661-51, you can look at exactly what's in that kit. And you may be asking, well, what do I care what's in the kit? Well, I can't tell you how many times that valve plates get sold to a contractor, he picks them up, he leaves, he comes back a couple hours later or the next morning, he puts them on your counter and says, I only needed the gasket. Can I return these? Okay, great. So now you take those valve plates back, but you, now you have to build him out for the gaskets he took, and you also have to order those gaskets again to make those valve plates whole, right? So this is a great way to see what gaskets come in a valve plate kit, okay? There they are. There's four different gaskets, valve plate to body, and one uh, cylinder head to valve plate. So if he took all one, two, three, if he took all of those gaskets out, you probably wouldn't you have used all of them, but he may have taken a few of those. You can look, see what's left in the kit that he returned and replace the ones that are missing. This is a really cool feature, okay? So this is definitely something you guys want to be using. Uh, somebody wanted to look at X-Line for service parts. We can do that. X-Line also brings up the same page, all the applications and refrigerants that it's approved for.
you'll get that summary sheet. Here's the compressor that's in that model number, the ZS13KAE. Here's your service parts for Exxon. Okay, your five set, your receiver, fan blade, fan motor, okay? Everything else that we use to build that unit, okay? The full list of parts. You can also go to wiring diagrams. This is the color coded wiring diagram that is on the door of your X line unit, okay? Look how fast we pulled that up. This used to be a little bit of an ordeal to find a wiring diagram for a condensing unit, okay? Now you can pull it right up on Copeland Mobile. You can look at a reference drawing. So you're talking to a customer about X-Line units. Um, he says, wow, can, can you shoot me a dimensional drawing? I wanna see if it'll fit in this space I've got up on the roof, it's pretty tight. As fast as I just did that, you've now got this dimensional drawing of that X-Line unit and you can forward it, uh, you can email it, text it. There's also, here's a, the tip of the day, when you're looking at drawings for condensing units, this is typically a place where you can find your receiver capacities, okay? So you'll see here for the various refrigerants at 90% full, this is the uh, capacity of the receiver, all right? So if you're ever looking for receiver capacities and you're using Copa Mobile, and you can pull up a drawing, most of the time for condensing units, it'll be up in that upper right-hand corner, okay? So that's a really good uh, reference point to look at uh, pump-down capacity on our receivers as well. Julie, there's a couple minutes left. Is there anything you want to cover as far as um, scanning or anything like that that you want to talk about? Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I can. You know what? Let me uh, let me grab the ball from you real quick here, and I just want to show. Um, um, okay, I share my screen. Um, what I want to show with you guys, and I, I'm I'm getting into the actual the analytics on <clears throat> that we're collecting behind the scenes. There is scanning functionality within Copeland Mobile. Um, what I would strongly encourage everybody to push your contractors and, and your counter people to scan and specifically scan the serial number. Um, every time a scan happens, we are gathering the data about where the person is when they've scanned the compressor, the physical location of them, um, who they are, uh, and that sort of thing. And we are using that information and feeding that back to your wholesaler companies so that you can, um, you can position your inventory in, in the right places. <clears throat> you can see here, uh, we enabled scanning back in 2016, late in 2016. Um, it, it really wasn't until last year that it, it sort of uh, took off. You can see here, the installed database of where a lot of the scans are happening. So, you know, nearly, you know, 6,700 in California, 7,200 in, uh, in Texas. Um, we can see daily scans all time. Uh, the reason that this is important is, and I'm gonna switch over here to uh, a functionality that we're enabling in June that's called job site commissioning. Um, so you can see here, we've worked with a couple, there's a couple of end users, specifically Whole Foods and McDonald's, who have asked us for job site commissioning so that uh, when they go to a job site uh, and when they start up a rack, um, they're going to instruct their technicians to, to scan and commission the product into service. Um, the functionality, and I'm moving through this pretty quickly because I know that we're just about out of time, um, but there will be a, a, a commissioning uh, tab that will be along the bottom. It's gonna keep a record of the job dashboard for each user. Um, you can see here, so there's their job dashboard. There's the locations where they've scanned. 
Um, I'm going to skip past that. The dashboard is going to show um, the location. Um, you'll be able to scan multiple models from the same job site. Um, again, scanning the serial number. This is also going to feed into our warranty database. So if there are any extended warranties that are offered on jobs, this will, uh, this will essentially trigger the, the start of the warranty is that job site commissioning. Um, let's skip through here because this is all just kind of the, the uh, mechanics of it. But what, what I really want to show you here is <clears throat> there's going to be a, a verification where the user, the, the contractor will enter his phone number and uh, will essentially send him a code and he will get a, basically a receipt of, hey, this has been commissioned into service. So if you have a, um, an end user, a technician that's working for an end user and they want validation that a warranty has been, or a com compressor has been commissioned into service to start a warranty, they can utilize Copeland Mobile for, for job site commissioning. Um, again, a couple of other enhancements that are coming will be warranty lookup on these commission models. And then um, a preferred wholesaler, if, if any of the end users have specific wholesalers that they would prefer to work through um, to support the install base, that will also be enabled in Copeland Mobile. Um, I think that's about, oh, the last one, um, and I have this covered up here, but we are looking at CTS supported chat. So when you're in Copeland Mobile, um, when you're in Copeland Mobile and you're looking for, uh, for instance, where to buy, if I want to buy this VF24, I'm going to go to where to buy and select my model and find a wholesaler. What this is going to show me here is that um, within 150 miles of me, there, there isn't any, well, of wherever 67301 is. Um, so that's somewhere near Kansas City. Um, nothing in stock within about 150 miles, but Mount Comfort does have it in stock. If I want to see where it is in stock, I can see that Dennis Supply has it. Um, Ilco has it. Um, the CTS-supported chat will actually show on here if there is a, if there is a CTS that's located at the Sioux Falls location, we will indicate on here that there's a Copeland Technical Specialist um, and they can contact that branch for CTS support. So those were essentially the things I wanted to cover. And I know we are definitely add to yeah. this on the where to buy. Some wholesalers kind of get offended because we have where to buy and it obviously shows other wholesalers in here. I'll give you an example of how it worked uh, to one of my contract or wholesalers called me on an old XJ circuit board that we no longer made and had none stock, and he used this where to buy and he found it somewhere in a wholesaler up in Washington and as a favor to the customer he didn't want to get involved with a warranty on a different part so he just gave the contractor the phone number and it was a great service for the contractor he got his part and he was happy and secondly on the as far as scanning, you know, I, I push contractors to scan every compressor they're on, uh, and hopefully the diagnostics will help them do that. The second thing for a wholesaler that you want that for, that information sending back to us is important. And I'll give you an example of, let's look at propane compressors are brand new in the market. None of them have gone bad, and I doubt if many wholesalers are even stocking them right now because you haven't sold any. That information, of if they get scanned, and let's just say in Arizona there's 300 of them scanned in the Phoenix market area. That information goes to Julie. Julie forwards it back to us. We send it to you, the wholesaler, and say, hey, you've got 200 of this model in stock or out in use in Phoenix. You might want to stock one or two. So there's a lot of benefits for the wholesaler to getting contractors to scan this stuff also. Absolutely. Yeah, we use this data, the installed, the, the scans and the installed database to help um, develop gap reports for your own. For, for your branch locations and for your companies. So um, 
you know, again, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Scott and, and Larry. I know we're way over, well, we're five minutes over. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this session, and I'm going to start up the the session at, um, at well, I guess, it, you know, most of the people that are on the session are going to be on the same one that's coming up next. Um, so, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and, and We'll end this one. We'll start up the next one. I'm going to go through another tool that we have that's called StorySlab. It's available. Most of you, if you're product managers that are on the call, you're familiar with it. But I'm going to go through some of the features of that, and uh, we can work to get any of your other employees set up on it that are interested. So uh, we'll, we'll dial back in here in, in just a couple of minutes. So thanks, everybody. Thank you.